going on guys it's your boy back up on scene with another video incognito for you guys today i got another video from mr nightmare channel you know and quite a few videos from him uh it's for the show true playground horror story so without further ado we're gonna get right into this um links will be in the description down below and all that and leave a comment down below leave a like and all that slap a like subscribe all that without further ado let's get right into this so Y'all doing by the way, though. You good, you good. Okay. When I was 17 in my last year of high school, I was finally starting to hit things off with a girl I liked. 17? I'll call her Lynn. Lynn was a big pot smoker. At the time, it really wasn't my thing, but I went along with it just because. I live a couple blocks from her, so I always walked before I got a car. Across the street from her house is a park. Commonly at night, she'd instant message me on AOL to come hang out at the park. Oh, AOL. Sometimes this is we'd way just sit on the playground the at night oh. and talk for hours. Sometimes she'd convince me to smoke with her. It was always hey, no, such I'll a private right place here. to hang out. Hey, who remembers AOL back in the day, Dollar? Oh, oh my who god! Who remembers the struggle from back in the day? Let me know. Let me know in that comment box. Alright, let's get back into this play talk especially at night a line of thick trees surrounded the playground as well creating a wall of sorts well one night we both snuck out around 12 and met at the playground in the park we talked for a while then Lynn perked up playfully hit me on the shoulder and said we should play hide-and-seek it may sound immature for a couple seniors in high school to play hide-and-seek but it just seemed like it would be fun she told me to go to the trees and count to 30. When I was done, my first instinct was of course to check the playground, and if she wasn't there, I'd move on to the picnic bench area. We always had flashlights on us when we went to the park, this, this because like this was before everyone had phones nighttime. with flashlights in their pockets. I, see, like, what? I stepped from the grass onto the wood fiber mulch surrounding the playground. I aimed my flashlight up to the playground, because I guess I was too lazy to go up there if I didn't have to. You know those big plastic circular things with a bunch of tiny holes in it that a lot of playgrounds have? Maybe not, but there was one of those things up at the highest level of the playgrounds, and through a bunch of holes, I could see what appeared to be skin and a jacket, but what stood out the most was her eye peering through one of the holes. Instead of going up there right away, I decided it would be fun to kind of mess with her. I waved the flashlight around the playground, pretending like I didn't that see her. her. I, I was going to walk her. to the picnic area, turn on the flashlight, walk around to the trees, back to the playground, sneak up on her, and scare the living daylight out of her. Don't ask me why, I just wanted to. I walked to the picnic area, shut off the flashlight, and snuck back over to the playground. I was careful not to make noise as I crept through the wood chips that the playground sat on. Before I could even step foot on the first platform of the playground, something grabbed my arm and pulled me. I actually screamed, but stopped when I heard Lynn's laughter. I turned on the flashlight and was relieved to see it was her. The prank okay. obviously backfired completely. After that, we went back up to the second level platform of the playground that we always chilled in. I asked her if she knew that I saw her behind that plastic thing at the top of the playground. But she was confused. She acted as if she never went up there. I explained to her that I saw someone up there. We both looked up as the tiny creaking sounds we had been hearing every so often suddenly made a disturbing amount of sense. I aimed the light up there which revealed someone's head hunched over the railing of the platform above us. At the same time we heard footsteps kicking the wood chips around right below oh, the platform no, we were man. sitting on. Oh, no. I made the first move for us to run, and Lynn followed suit. I turned out my flashlight while we ran, which wasn't long since Lynn's house was right across the street. We went to her room, shut the curtains, and I stayed there for the night, not wanting to go home. That marked the end of our late night visits to the park. I see why. Like, that, I'm surprised that it never happened sooner that something like that happened. 
That's crazy. Do you have any memories from when you were a little kid that just make you uncomfortable to think about? Especially since you were so young at the time that you didn't know any better? Well, this is mine. My mom used to take me to this really big playground in my town. And when I say really big, I'm not exaggerating. It was probably the biggest playground you'd ever see. If only I knew the name of it. The playground was entirely wooden, and every Saturday and Sunday there would be at least 50 kids playing across it, with the parents all tucked away in the shaded area reading their magazines and whatnot. Okay. One typical busy day at the playground, I was running along a big open platform when an older woman stopped me and said hi. She kept going on and on about how cute I was, and how she loved my blonde hair. It started to seem like she knew me based off the way she was talking to me. And then she told me that my mom left and that she told her to take me home. Oh, no. Keep in mind, I was only six, so I believed her. I'm pausing again. I know, I'm, I'm pausing a lot. Um, no, sir. No, ma'am. Bro, this guy right now. Hurry no. up. No, whenever somebody oh, does that. Don't do it. Yeah. yeah. Whenever oh, somebody God. says that type of stuff. Oh, like, my God. Oh, I know your parents. They left. They want me to take you or whatever. Go back to that spot you remember where your parents was at. Whatever, bitch, whatever. Just make sure. Because that right there is the typical, like, I want to say lazy type of way that they want to, like, you know, abduct you or whatever. Or take you, whatever you want to call it. Like, that's just sick and disgusting, too, on top of that. But, like, like just really, just really just pay attention with your surroundings and things like that. Because this, this, this is just already just red flags all over. All right. Play took me to the parking lot to an old station wagon where a man I now presume to be her husband was sitting in the driver's seat he acted all friendly to me as the woman motioned me into the back seat but I remember him yelling and lecturing at her about something the man drove very aggressively and quickly as he was leaving the parking lot we came to the light at the exit of the park it was red just then a car pulled up behind us and laid on the horn I looked behind us, and it was my mom's car. The man blew through the red light, which even I picked up on, and started flooring it down the streets. I started to cry and scream as I realized my mom didn't know these people. Not long after, the man pulled the car over and yelled at the top of his lungs at me to get out of the car. I opened the door, still crying my eyes out in fear. My mom pulled up next to me, ran out of the car, and hugged me. In the heat of the moment, she didn't get the tag number, nor was she able to call the police since this was 2001 and there were no cell phones. I really wish I didn't remember this day so clearly. Day. Like, that's crazy. I would have rather it just been one of those memories that the brain chooses to repress. I'm a single father currently living with my five-year-old son. I have an old wooden playground in my backyard. It has a tire swing, monkey bars, and a big slide. A couple times recently, I've heard noises coming from the playground at night. I'll start from the first night. I woke up one night last week to the sound of something squeaking from outside. I recognized it to be the sound of the rusty chain of the tire swing spinning around. I also heard a young child's laughter out there. I thought it was my son, so I went to his room to find him in his bed fast asleep. My heart dropped as I saw him in his bed. That meant some stranger was in my yard. But when I opened the back door to the backyard, there was no one back there. The tire swing was spinning slowly, however, as if somebody had just gotten off of it. I chalked it up as some kid just sneaking into my yard and went back to sleep. The next night, however, I woke up again to the sound of someone stomping up and down the slide, once again accompanied by the sound of a child's laughter. Oh, man, I checked awkward. my son's room once again to find him in bed. This time I thought I'd be a little smarter about it and check the window first before going outside. Nothing was out there though, not on the playground at least. I still went outside anyway just to make sure. For a couple nights nothing happened and I completely forgot about it. But on the third night, while in bed, a knock at my window startled me. 
I sat up in shock for a good minute, afraid to look outside, but eventually I was brave enough to do so. I looked out the foggy window. Through the smudge, I could see both the swings on the swing set swinging lightly, accompanied with the laughter of a child again. I ran as fast as I could down those stairs and out the back door, but instead of finding a couple of deviant little kids back there, instead I saw some towering figure looming at the top of my playground, surely looking at me. My courage turned to pure cowardice as I turned to run back inside, lock the door, and dial 911. The wait for an officer to arrive was the longest 20 minutes I'd ever experienced. By the time they got there though, the figure on the playground was gone. They took down what little information I could give them and left. I wish I could say that was the last occurrence, but just last night, there was another knock at my window. I simply ignored it this time though. I'm dreading going to sleep tonight. I think I'm going to install security cameras on my house soon. Either way, I'll give an update on what happens. Oh man, that's freaky right there, man. That's, you gotta move. Uh, you just gotta move, that's it. You have to move. It's nothing else. You have to move. I was 13 years old. My bedroom window faced the playground outside. It was a hot spring night with a light rain, so I had the window open, allowing me to hear the raindrops as well as a strange squeaking sound. It really started to get annoying, so I went to the window to see what it could be. There was someone sitting on the swing set. I nearly screamed, but covered my mouth instead. What was really scary was that the swing was in the direct line of sight from my window, and the person on the swing was staring straight at my window. I could only hope they didn't see me. I was too scared to yeah, go across the house you, to my parents' room. You, Instead, you. all I really wanted to do was hide in my bed and hope they would go away. But the squeaking went on and on. I covered my ears not only because I was scared, but also because of the annoyance of the sound. And finally, at last, the squeaking stopped. I gave it a few seconds before I quietly got out from bed and went back to the window. This time, I actually screamed. The person who was previously on the swing was now standing at most 10 feet from my window, looking in, close enough for Bro, me to make out his horrid fam, face like with his eyes locked onto mine, yeah. but only for maybe a second or two, because I went straight to my parents' room screaming for my dad the whole way. My dad looked out the window, then went outside. He came back in five minutes later and said there were boot marks under the swings where a patch of mud accumulated, but he couldn't find the person who made them. This was 100% the scariest moment of my life. These sound effects like are really, really creepy. Like those sound, these sound like the the V over with now. Those sound effects are like so, so creepy. Like, the fact that he got the little black figure or whatever on the screen and then it's like they make the noises, you know what I'm saying? It just, it just hits you, like, but, but, like, but like I said though, to be honest, like, like for me, like it's just, for most of these situations, some of them is unavoidable, like cause some of you like young, but like, that first one, like that dude was like 17. It's like, out of all of those times, you were smoking pop with this girl because you liked her, or whatever. Nothing ever happened, or you never thought to think like nothing would ever happen when you guys like are hanging out with each other. It's never, huh? But, but right there, man, that's uh, gonna be about doing it right there, man. Four, four, four disturbing true playground horror stories by Mr. Nightmare. Like I said, links will be in the description down below. Just like a like on this thing, subscribe, all that. Just thank you guys for um for the few the few that actually have subbed to me. And I'm just like I said, I'm trying to get this um thing this, this train rolling. Trying to get to at least 500 subs, and then maybe we can probably go a thousand. And you know, just keep you know what I'm saying. Just gotta keep thinking go higher and higher just hopefully like say i'm at like 130 something right now and like i said just hope i can get to like 500 and then like we just keep going from that point because you gotta start from somewhere right start from the bottom of that year you gotta do that 
But without further ado, man, I'm gonna catch y'all next reaction. It's your boy being incognito ace. Yeah, I have a blessed day. Oh, I don't wanna be alone.